Everybody, Brian Good here. Good to see you guys again. Uh, welcome to Storm Talk, although we're winding down on the uh, Storm Talk issue as we head into time here. Uh, one thing I want to point out right off the bat, this map is wrong. I'm not sure why it's showing thunderstorm chances all over the entire <laughs> country today, because that's not going to happen. A little bit of a glitch there, I'm assuming from SBC. Uh, as we know, Wednesday, that's a little more like it, and on Thursday, you start to see a little bit there in New Mexico. So nice and quiet uh, here locally. Uh, we are just uh, getting ready for this front that's going to move in as we head into our Friday and uh, see how that's going to affect our temperatures for the weekend. Right now, uh, we're enjoying some very pleasant weather outside. A little cool when it comes to that wind out there, but uh, nice and pleasant. 65 degrees here in the town. You see those high clouds kind of streaming overhead. Actually, these some of these are lower clouds. These are cumulus, a little bit lower to the ground. Uh, and you're seeing these pass overhead now. Again, a little bit of a glancing blow. This is the back edge of a larger low pressure that's sitting over portions of the Great Lakes. And we're getting just the tail end of that uh, wrap around, if you will. This is uh, if this was January, we'd probably be seeing snow flurries right now. Uh, the back edge flurries that we always get in the winter time. It seems like after big storm systems come through, this is the same thing except we don't have flurries falling through the air. All right, but it is uh, certainly cooler. All right, here's a large view of the pattern. One thing I'll point out is this cutoff low here. When I was uh, working last week, a lot of models were still holding it on tough to portions of the uh, desert southwest, which would allow for that uh, cool blast for this upcoming weekend to aim itself more into the northeast. But with it now, look where it's centered, offshore. So with it being more uh, away from the United States and certainly over the Pacific Ocean, that should allow a little more digging to take place with this cool shot as we head into this weekend. But I uh, just looked at the NAO. It's still not overly negative, so there's still not a lot of steam power here. So uh, quite a progressive pattern. So you get these cool shots, they move right on out, and then we'll see another one. And uh, I think that pattern may continue for quite some time. In fact, Looking at the longer range, uh, i got a feeling we're going to have situations where we've got several cool shots and cold shots all the way through uh, mid-November. So it's about to get busy for us. All right, let's talk about how things are going to play out, though, in the short term for this weekend. Uh, we've got this cool front that moves through. This is the GFS, by the way. Euro is not entirely in yet. Uh, but the GFS shows the front moving in. Friday, uh, so far, most models are coming in dry with this front. Uh, the Canadian uh, came in a few moments ago and is giving us some light drizzle or some cloud cover at the very least. So I'm going to keep that very small 10% chance in for maybe a few areas of very light rain or sprinkles that may pass as the front moves in. But got to keep in mind, the Gulf of Mexico is not open for business for us this week. So we don't have a chance to really regain a lot of moisture that we have with this last front. So it's got limited moisture certainly to work with, uh, with the Gulf of Mexico being shut off. So uh, yeah, it's not a high rain chance at all as the front moves through here on Friday. So we get this cool shot that moves through, but again, it moves on out. And you see a little bubble of warm air. Uh, we do warm things back up as we head into uh, about a week from today. Uh, we'll get our trend started again, but then yet another cool shot works its way in as we head to about the 23rd. Now, <clears throat> we'll see how this plays out. The uh, Canadian sees something developing here as far as the Gulf and moves an area of low pressure into the southeast corner of the country. A wet forecast after this point. So this would be the following weekend. Not this weekend, but the following weekend after that uh, would look a little more wet. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, the issue we're going to have as we get into November is we're going to have progressive areas of cool shots and cold shots, as I mentioned. When are we going to get the subtropical jet involved in this is going to be when things get a little more interesting for us. Uh, and if it's a typical and you know pattern, we should see that showing up very soon. Um, and that's what the Canadian seems to be hinting at. Once you start getting the subtropical jet involved, you're going to start getting more organized areas of low pressure developing in the southeast corner of the country. And that's when things get... A little hairy around here, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. Otherwise, it's just a fairly weak front to come through through here as far as moisture and that uh, drop us down temperature wise. So uh, pretty much on schedule off this frost potential as we head into this weekend, and some may even see a freeze the way it's looking. In fact, let's talk about the numbers. Here we go on GFS Saturday morning. Now keep in mind the versions you're seeing here, the GFS, and I'm going to show the Euro. The grids on these are not as high resolution as what some of you weather enthusiasts are able to find and online. So the grids are, it's kind of choppy how things are working. So they're, the number's not going to be exact. This gives you just a general idea. Uh, GFS is coming in with mid-30s in some areas, upper 30s otherwise for Saturday morning in the afternoon hours. It warms us up close to 60. Here in the city, we probably will hit 60, uh, but a lot of us will not. It'll be a cool day, the coolest day we've had the fall season with a lot of 50s around. Then we get into Sunday morning. This is going to be the coldest morning, Sunday morning. Uh, the winds look lighter too because in order to get frost, you've got to have clear skies and you've got to have the uh, the calm winds 
for sure, and temperature is getting below that 37 degree mark. That's when you start getting into frost issues. If the winds stay up, that actually keeps temperature elevated because the air is mixed, is what we call that. So uh, the winds look calmer for Sunday compared to Saturday. So that's why Sunday's potential, it's a good radiation cooling, high pressures over us, good chance to drop down to the freezing mark, if not below it, in some locations. Best chance would be in the favored valley areas, but north and east of Louisville, certainly could see a few 20s when rolled out. Here in the city, uh, we will likely get into the frost zone below the 37 degree mark. It's just a matter of how much further below 37 we get because the urban uh, warmth or heat effect does play a role in that for us a lot uh, with these kind of setups. Nevertheless, I do think a lot of you are going to see your first frost if you don't live, especially within the Gene Snyder Freeway. Your chance for frost is there and some of you may even see a light freeze. I don't see a hard freeze, but a light freeze is possible for Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, we're up to about 60, so Sunday looks to be a warmer afternoon compared to Saturday. And then as we get into a Monday, cooler start again. It's going to be chilly for the kids for the bus stop next Monday, but not as cold as Sunday morning. All right, here's the European model. And again, it's great. It's not perfect. But it's saying in the lower 40s, it's, I think 30s are going to be there. In the afternoon, it takes it to 55. I think it's going to be closer to 60. Uh, as we head into Sunday morning, it's not as cold as the uh, GFS, but you see it does show quite a few 30s showing up and uh, certainly within frost level. And then the trend I want you to notice on this while I'm showing it to you is that notice it is showing the same thing as GFS is that Sunday looks to be warmer than Saturday by a degree or two, that's it. And Sunday morning looks to be the coldest morning and then we warm things up slowly starting from there. All right, guys, that's how it looks for now. Nothing crazy, but it is gonna be our first frost looks like this weekend and uh, very close to where uh, we should be on schedule for that. I will say though, that, that is not gonna allow for a lot of beautiful color for the trees for the fall season here because a frost can actually cut off the, uh, the, the beautiful process that we see and cause the leaves to fall off before they have a chance to turn into the beautiful colors that we love. So a frost is good and bad. Good and idea for allergies. Obviously I'm separate through that today, uh, but it's uh, bad when it comes to fall color. That's the perfect scenario. Cool mornings, yes. When you get to the frost level though, that can ruin some of the bright, brilliant colors. But uh, that's just kind of a sad note for where you uh, fall color uh, enthusiasts. All right, guys. Uh, I'll see you today beginning at uh, 530.